Hi everyone, I'm Davina. These days, most people have faith and believe that there is a God. They believe in the God that's in their heart. So over time in different places, people have come to believe in so many different gods, hundreds, or maybe even thousands. Could there be so many? Absolutely not. Then how many are there and who is the true God? No famous or great personage can give a clear answer to this because no human can see God or come in direct contact with Him. Every person has a short lifespan and what they experience and witness is very limited. So who can bear clear testimony on God? Those who can are few and far between. We know the Bible as the most classic and authoritative work that bears witness to God. It contains testimony that God created everything. And since creating mankind, He has never stopped guiding man's life on earth. He issued the laws and commandments for man. And it also bears witness to God in the flesh that the Lord Jesus came to redeem mankind. It prophesies God's return in the last days to do the work of judgment to fully save mankind and take man to a beautiful destination. So it's clear that the God the Bible witnesses is the Creator, the one true God. This is well-founded. Some ask, who really is this God the Bible testifies about? What's His name? What would we call Him? He was called Jehovah. Then later in the flesh, He was called the Lord Jesus. And then Revelation prophesizes the Almighty coming in the last days. Almighty God. This God is He who created heaven, earth, all things, and mankind. He's the one true God who has always been guiding and saving humanity. He is eternal. He is sovereign over all and rules over everything. So anyone aside from this Creator and one true God is a false God. Satan is a false God. And those fallen angels that followed it are impersonating gods to deceive people without exception. For example, Buddha, Guan Yin, and the Jade Emperor of Taoism are all false gods. There are many other false gods such as those ordained by past emperors, and there's no need to get into other religions' gods. So why do we say that they are false gods? Because they didn't create everything in heaven and on earth, or created mankind. This is the soundest evidence. All those that aren't capable of creating all things, of ruling over everything, are false gods. Do you think a false god would dare claim that all things were created by it? No. What about human beings? It wouldn't dare. Would a dare claim it could save mankind from Satan? Definitely not. When the disasters really come, if you appeal to a false god, will it appear? It won't be able to. It will hide, right? So we can see that false gods can't save mankind, and believing in them is faith in vain. Believing in them will be doing yourself in and can only end with sinking to destruction. This is why the importance of determining who is the real god, the Lord who created everything, cannot be overstated. Let's take a look at what it says in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. This is the very first verse in the Bible. This is incredibly authoritative and meaningful. It shares the mystery of God creating heaven, earth, and all things with mankind. Genesis is also a record of God creating light and air with His words, as well as all animals and plants, and creating man with His own hands. God created all things, and He sustains and nourishes all things. He gives us everything for our survival. Mankind and all other living things survive under the laws ordained by God. 
This is the unique power and authority of the Creator in something that no human, angel, or evil spirit of Satan could ever possess or achieve. We can say with certainty that the only one capable of creating all things and mankind is the Creator, the one true God. God created all things, and He created mankind. He rules over everything. Meanwhile, He is leading and saving all of humanity. Let's see what the Bible says. In the beginning, God created mankind. And after Adam and Eve were tempted by Satan, man lived in sin. Adam and Eve's descendants multiplied on earth, but they didn't know how to live or how to worship the true God. Based on his management plan, God began his work of the age of law, issuing the laws and commandments, teaching mankind what sin was, what they should do and what they shouldn't do, so they knew how to live and how to worship Jehovah God. This is how God guided mankind onto the right track for life. Late in the age of law, mankind was so deeply corrupted by Satan, they couldn't follow the law and were sinning more and more. There weren't even enough sin offerings to give. All of mankind would have been condemned and put to death under the law if that went on. To save mankind, God became flesh as the Lord Jesus. He was personally crucified for humanity as our sin offering, taking on man's sins. After that, nobody had to give sin offerings for their sins. As long as they believed, confessed, and repented to the Lord, their sins were forgiven, and they could come before God to enjoy everything He graced them with. Without the Lord Jesus' sin offering, everyone would have been condemned and put to death under the law, and there's no way we would still be here today. So we know that the Lord Jesus is the Redeemer of all mankind, the appearance of the one true God. His Spirit is the Spirit of Jehovah God. He is the appearance of Jehovah God in the flesh. To put it more casually, Jehovah God came to the world as a man to redeem mankind, and He is the only true God. In the age of grace, the Lord Jesus did the work of redemption and everyone who believed in the Lord had their sins forgiven. In spite of enjoying the peace and joy of forgiveness of sins and all of the grace God bestowed upon man, mankind has never stopped sinning. People live in a cycle of sinning, confessing, and sinning again. They haven't attained holiness or become worthy of entering God's kingdom. The Lord Jesus promised He would come again in the last days to fully save man from sin and make them cleansed, to take them into His kingdom. Just as He promised, God has now personally come to earth in the flesh. He is Almighty God expressing the truth and doing His last day's judgment work. Almighty God has uttered millions of words revealing the mysteries of God's 6,000-year management plan and telling mankind all about the roots of man's sinning and resistance to God, how Satan corrupts man, how God works step by step to save man, how to practice faith to be purified and enter His kingdom, how to achieve submission and love for God, as well as the outcome and final destination of every type of person. There is such rich variety in the truths uttered by Almighty God. Nothing is lacking. Seeing how many truths Almighty God has expressed, we can confirm that He is the Lord Jesus returned, because the Lord prophesied, When He, the Spirit of Truth, is come, He will guide you into all truth. Isn't Almighty God revealing so many truths, the fulfillment of the Lord Jesus' prophecy? Doesn't this prove that He is the Spirit of the Lord Jesus returned to work in the flesh? And so, 
Almighty God and the Lord Jesus are of one spirit. And Almighty God is the Savior come to earth to fully save mankind. Only God himself can express the truth. Outside of God, no human could possibly do this. Throughout the entire history of mankind, no human being has been able to express truths. The things said by all those famous and great personages and those devils and evil spirits impersonating gods are all fallacies and misleading lies without a single word of the truth. Only God himself can express the truth and save mankind. There is no doubt about it. God created the heavens, the earth, all things, and he created mankind. He has been speaking and working to guide and save mankind all this time. We can say with confidence that only the creator who created heaven, earth, and all things, and rules over mankind's fate, is the one true God. God created mankind, and only God concerns himself with man's fate and advancement. Since completing the work of creating the world, God has been focused on mankind, shepherding us and providing us with everything we need, providing for us with great abundance. He did not depart from and disregard us after creating us. When humanity began officially living on the earth, God began his work of the age of law, issuing the commandments to guide man's life on earth. When man became too deeply corrupted by Satan to keep the laws, everyone was facing condemnation under the laws and was at a point of no return. So God became flesh as the Lord Jesus and personally completed the work of redemption to forgive mankind of their sins, allowing them to enjoy the grace and blessings bestowed by God. When that age ended, God once again incarnated this time as Almighty God, to do the work of judgment in the last days, to fully save humanity from sin and from Satan's forces, to lead mankind into a beautiful destination. Although every age of God's work has a different name and he has completed different work, it is all done by one God. He has just one spirit and he is the one true God. This is indisputable. Just as Almighty God says, The work of God's entire management plan is personally done by God Himself. The first stage, the creation of the world, was personally done by God Himself. And if it had not been, then no one would have been capable of creating mankind. The second stage was the redemption of all mankind, and it was also personally done by God Himself. The third stage goes without saying, there is an even greater need for the end of all God's work to be done by God Himself. The work of redeeming, conquering, gaining, and perfecting the whole of mankind is all personally carried out by God Himself. If He did not personally do this work, then His identity could not be represented by man, nor His work done by man. In order to defeat Satan, in order to gain mankind, and in order to give man a normal life on earth, he personally leads man and personally works among man. For the sake of his entire management plan and for all of his work, he must personally do this work. The three stages of work carried out from the beginning until today were all carried out by God himself and were carried out by the one God. The fact of the three stages of work is the fact of God's leadership of all mankind, a fact that no one can deny. At the end of the three stages of work, all things will be classed according to kind and return under the dominion of God. For throughout the entire universe, there only exists this one God, and there are no other religions. He who is incapable of creating the world will be incapable of bringing it to an end whereas he who created the world will surely be capable of bringing it to an end. Therefore, if one is unable to bring the age to an end 
and is merely able to help man cultivate his mind, then he will surely not be God, and will surely not be the Lord of mankind. He will be incapable of doing such great work. There is only one who can carry out such work, and all that are unable to do this work are surely enemies and not God. All evil religions are incompatible with God, and since they are incompatible with God, they are enemies of God. All work is done by this one true God, and the entire universe is commanded by this one God. Regardless of whether it is His work in Israel or in China, regardless of whether the work is carried out by the Spirit or by the flesh, all is done by God Himself and can be done by no one else. It is precisely because He is the God of all mankind that He works freely, unconstrained by any conditions. This is the greatest of all visions. We can see from God's words that there is only one God, only one Creator, only God Himself can create all things, rule over all of mankind's fate, guide mankind's life on earth, save man, and guide man into a beautiful destination. Just as it says in Revelation, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. False gods cannot create all things, much less save mankind or end an age. A false god can never perform the work that the true God does. A false god can only display some signs and wonders, or spread some heresies and fallacies to mislead and corrupt people. They may grant some little favors to win people over and have people burn incense for them and worship them as God. But false gods cannot forgive sins or express truths to cleanse people's corruption. They particularly cannot save mankind from Satan's forces. False gods daring to impersonate the true God shows they are evil and shameless to the extreme. And in the end, they'll be shackled and thrown into the bottomless pit by God. They will be punished. All who go against God will be obliterated by Him in the end. So, to seek the true God, you must look for the one who created all things, who rules over all things, the one who can express the truth and work to save mankind. This is key. Only by believing in and worshiping this one true God, accepting the truths He expresses, and gaining the truth as your life, can you be freed from sin, receive God's salvation, and enter the beautiful destination. If you don't know who the true God is, you need to seek and investigate. We cannot mistake false gods for the true God just because they show some wonders or cure some illnesses. This would be a taboo, because they are not the true God. Worshipping a false god is blasphemy. It is going up against God and is equivalent to betraying the true God. God's disposition will tolerate no human offense, so all who believe in a false god will be damned and destroyed by God. Almighty God says, So long as the old world continues to exist, I will hurl forth my rage upon its nations, openly promulgate my administrative decrees throughout the universe, and visit chastisement upon whosoever violates them. As I turn my face to the universe to speak, all mankind hears my voice, and thereupon sees all the works I have wrought throughout the universe. Those who set themselves against my will, that is to say, who oppose me with the deeds of man, will fall under my chastisement. I will take the multitudinous stars in the heavens and make them anew, and thanks to me, the sun and the moon will be renewed. The skies will no longer be as they were, and the myriad things on the earth will be renewed. All will become complete through my words. The many nations within the universe will be partitioned afresh and replaced by my kingdom, so that the nations upon the earth will disappear forever 
and all will become a kingdom that worships me. All the nations of the earth will be destroyed and cease to exist. Of the human beings within the universe, all those belonging to the devil will be exterminated, and all who worship Satan will be laid low by my burning fire. That is, except for those now within the stream, all will be turned to ashes. When I chastise the many peoples, those in the religious world will, to varying extents, return to my kingdom, conquered by my works, because they will have seen the advent of the Holy One riding on a white cloud. All people will be separated according to their own kind and will receive chastisements commensurate with their actions. All those who have stood against me will perish. As for those whose deeds on earth have not involved me, they will, because of how they have acquitted themselves, continue to exist on the earth under the governance of my sons and my people. I will reveal myself to the married peoples and the married nations, and with my own voice I will sound forth upon the earth, proclaiming the completion of my great work for all mankind to see with their own eyes. That's all for today's program. Thank you for joining us. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below the video. We know that this program will be really helpful for you. Please join us next time. See you soon.